15 years, give or take. Yes. Tell us about um, when you first came to work here and what the job interview was like. Well, it was uh, Risty and Ralph had interviewed me at the time. Okay. And um, I was 16 years old, and it was more a friend tells you that they're already working here and say, come on in and talk. We need someone. Okay. And they said, well, can you work weekends? Can you work holidays? Yes, yes, yes. You're willing to work hard? Yes, I am. Um, how many hours can you work? Well, three or five days a week, something like that. I've got school. Okay, we'll work around that. But work weekends for sure, yes. And then they just put you to work. So you started as a? Dishwasher. Okay. And sort of worked your way into serving? Uh, busing. Okay. And then there was we were in the kitchen back then all the high school kids and so there was two career paths you could take there was busing tables or going into the kitchen and cooking okay and I just like being mobile on the dining room so I kinda took the busing route a lot of my friends cooked and um, then it was bar back when you turn 21 so you can learn the wines and the alcohol and hosting uh, helping Wayne on New Year's Eve and things like that and then waiting tables seems like um, a lot of people just jumped in to help wherever they could is that part of the job? Yes, we all do everything here. There's nothing we do, don't do. Okay. What do you think keeps yourself and everyone else here for so long? Just the family environment, the customers, and the relationships you build with the, your employees. Okay. Um, Wayne's been great for a lot of years. Ralph and Risty were great. Uh, it's just a community restaurant, and it's always been here as long as I remember. Mm -hmm. And there's just a lot of... Uh, community about it all. Is it is it fun to have regular customers all the time that you know? Yes, it is. You get you know what they want, mm -hmm. and you pleasantly surprise them when you deliver it before they can ask. So that's always nice to do. Yeah, and we you know we were kind of chatting. Uh, holidays, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day. It must be crazy busy for you. <laughs> Those are great days. Yeah, the place gets packed. You get a lot of people. Hard to get a window table. Yeah, on those um, days. <laughs> you know, that's another really good point because this view is so spectacular, and everybody wants to sit by the window. How do you how do you sort of delegate that? Well, it's it's first come first serve. You can't you can request a window, but you can't be guaranteed one. Right. And someone can always get one um, if they're willing to wait. Right. So if they're all full, you have to wait for someone to turn, and then there's a waiting list for that. So depending on how peop hungry people are or how much they want that window is, you know, if they want to wait, they can eventually get one. Week nights are really great for getting a window table when we open. Just come early. Yeah. Seems like the one word that we hear from everybody is consistency. Something you can count on. Yeah, exactly. Just like the sun going down every night. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. Very true. Um, what is Wayne like? He's great. He, uh, he, he's a good teacher and he leads by example and he's honest and fair and he's really good to his employees. We were talking about the, the waffle story. Tell us about that. Okay, so I was about in my early 20s and I was waiting tables and we were short-handed. Someone didn't show up and it was the waffle person. And I don't know if Wayne was hosting and had someone take over, but he jumped in and did the waffle, cooked the waffles. And all of us at we're kind of pranksters in our 20s, so we started telling all the tables, you guys got to get the waffles. They're really good here. <laughs> <laughs> so we created a mini rush for Wayne and kept him pretty busy for a couple hours selling waffles. Was he amused by that? I think he got a kick out of it. Profit margins are pretty good on waffles, you know, so I think the, laugh last was, the last laugh was his. You know, and, and interesting because, you, you know, he, just talking about his example leading by example he just jumped in and did what needed to be yeah done. he still does when it gets busy around here he helps out on the floor a lot it seems like it's more of a homey environment than maybe other restaurants I've never worked in a restaurant like this one before really and I've worked in a lot of restaurants what what's the one word you would use then Community and family, I'd have to say two, probably. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jimmy, you've been here for 33 years at the Admiral Risty, waiting tables. Tell me about your very first day that you were here. First of all, I came in and I had a full head of hair. Okay, so. <laughs> Just a few years ago. 
33 years ago. So then I, I, I came from Las Vegas. That's where I worked for 15 years at the hotels there. Okay. Much different than here. All right. Because this is this place is unique to itself. What it, brought you to California? Well, I was born here. Okay. You know, I graduated from Gardena High School in 1970 and had family out in Las Vegas. So after high school, I went out there and I ended up being there for 13 years waiting on celebrities. Okay. Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., Joe Namath, Joe Lewis, Dion Warwick, a whole bunch of them. So that's what kept me there. Okay. But I was homesick the whole time. All right. My family was here, so then when I realized that, it, it, that Vegas wasn't doing me right, I, I came back and I got this job after about three or four months. Okay. And, uh, and what was it like when you had your first day on the job here at the Admiral Estate? It was really fun. I was excited to be back doing something that I knew. I remember my interview with Wayne, he says, we like our employees to have their personality Good. the way they want. And unlike, you know, corporate restaurants, where everybody has to say the same thing right. at the table. I wouldn't last a day in that environment. Well, I was going to ask you, what do you think makes the Admiral Risty unique for a server? Well, look at the environment here, you know, I mean, I, my first day or two or whatever, I said, you know what, even if I were rich, I think I'd still want to work here one or two days yeah, a week. Yeah, it's beautiful. And, uh, but we have a, a whole, we have an eclectic uh, staff here. I mean, different, you know, men, women, older, younger. So that's really, that's a good uh, makeup of the staff. Nobody has better fish than we have. No, okay, great. with many, many different styles of cooking. Nobody that I've known, that I've been to has better fish than we have. Mm -hmm. The halibut, the sea bass, the salmon, the sort of unbelievable. So that's very good. And we have all these, you know, the shellfish and the steaks and, everything, and they're all great too. Tell us the story about the, the little whale behind you and the secret language here at the Avalanche. Oh, so like I told you, I come from Las Vegas and um, there wasn't a jargon. There wasn't a, a vernacular, you know, and it was everything. It was, it was an international city. So, so I come here and uh, Wayne introduced, introduced me to Slade, okay. a server who had been here for a while. And he said, Slade, show Jimmy the ropes. So, hello, Slade. And Slade says, Jimmy, okay. Buff the whale scene and I'll be stoked and you'll be genius. So I go, you know, I'm looking. I mean, there's whales. Everywhere. The, the mirrors, the everywhere, core balls, they're all over the place. And Fine says, hey, I give up. <laughs> so what he, what he wanted me to do was just to fill up the sugars and the whales. That was his way of saying it, you know. Yes. So they have a, definitely have a vernacular up here. And I had to get used to words such as gnarly and genius and stoked and all that stuff. And, <laughs> You know, so one time we're, we're we're hanging around out here with the new, with me, the new guy, and everybody everybody are going, that's genius, Jimmy, that's genius. I says, I think you geniuses need to come up with another word. You know, <laughs> everything's genius with you guys, but that was because I wasn't used to that that but lack of a vocabulary. But you learned it all. Oh, I love them, yeah, I love them all, yeah. So. Yeah. I was friends with Dan Heller, who's the bar manager here. Okay. And at the time, I was working at the Velvet Turtle in Redondo Beach. And so when we would close up, we'd go down to Hennessy's and have a drink. And I would see Dan periodically and have a drink with him and stuff. And uh, one night he says to me, you know, we're looking for a bartender. You know, anybody that might be interested? I said, well, I might be interested. And um, I think within about a week later, I came in and had an interview with Wayne and uh, I got the job. Did you ever think you would be here for 32 years? I didn't think they'd put up with me for 32 years, um, but I'm happy to have been here 32 years. It's it's been a it's been a good ride. What is the experience like? This is such a special place because of obviously where it is, the fact that the longevity everybody knows about the Admiral Risty. What is so special? Do you think having seen it firsthand about the Admiral Risty? Well. Um, like you touched on, there's a lot of employees that have been here a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of customers that come in and they want to sit with those special servers or maybe the bartender because we, we understand what they want, whichever way we can. So whether it's maybe a special drink that uh, I'm not familiar with, you know, I might try and you know, figure that out and make something that they like. And as far as the servers too, you know, um, there are things on the menu um, that might be torqued a little bit so that it's something that the customer really wants. So I, I think that's part of it. It's just trying to 
you know, be there and, and um, you know, make available things that maybe other places can't do. You know, it's interesting because some of the servers were touching upon the fact that a lot of times they'll have regular customers that come in and they don't really have the time to like chat with them for a long time because they're busy and they still make the time. But for you, this is really part of your job, isn't it? Tell me about that. True, 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 true. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm back here all the time, so I'm not, well, with the exception of running a, a food order once in a while. But... Um, you know, I'm back here, and so there's a lot of time that I have to be able to spend with the customers. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I'm just taking a drink order. Sometimes I'm a, a psychiatrist. Um, you know, so it, it just depends. But but it's nice. Um, I like being close with customers, um, and I think they appreciate the fact that I'm always back here. Mm -hmm. So. Over the years, you've had many different kinds of customers, and of course, in this area, we have a lot of athletes, celebrities. Tell me about some of the ones that have crossed your path. Um, well, I was fortunate enough to meet uh, Yogi Berra um, from the Yankees. Um, Did you know who he was when he came in? I actually didn't. Um, Jimmy knew who he was, and he was sitting at one of the tables, and he came up to the bar. And, all excited and he said you're not going to believe who's sitting over on you know table five or whatever it was and I said who he says Yogi Bear I said yeah Jimmy Jimmy's always pulling funny stuff with me right so I didn't believe him at first I'm like okay sure anyway as it turns out it was Yogi Bear and uh, when he got up to leave instead of going around th this way he went through this way well as soon as he hit that corner I had a pen and a piece of paper and you know, Mr. Bear, would you mind signing an autograph? It'd be a great honor. He said, oh, sure, no problem. Signed the autograph, shook his hand, walked out, and I was just walking, you know, about 10 feet off the ground for the whole week, you know. So that was great. But um, another one of my favorites is um, Parnelli Jones. And uh, he and his family are probably in, I'd say, at least once, maybe twice a month. And... Um, He's been nice enough to actually uh, show me around his shop, show me his cars and such. So I've got a close bond with Parnelli. Mm -hmm. um, but I've also met some, um, some of the uh, um, singers. I met uh, Mickey Dolenz. Oh, wow. From the Monkees. Yeah. Uh, he was sitting at the bar. Um, I also have met um, Keanu Reeves, which... He was nice enough to sign an autograph for my wife. Very nice. Um, but there's also been um, other sports figures. Uh, some of the Raiders, when they were in L.A., would come in here. So I didn't necessarily meet them, but I did see Howie Long oh, yeah. and Art Shell. Mm -hmm. um, we've had some other um, entertainers. Um, Marie Osmond was also here. Wow. And it was funny because we weren't sure if it was her or not, but then come to find out that she was honeymooning at Terranea just down the street, so that was her. It was definitely her. So, but yeah, it's, it's been really nice, and, and everybody has been really nice. Um, most people, uh, most celebrities, I should say, are happy to sign an autograph or take a little time to talk with you, um, and it's nice to see that they're regular people. They're not just, you know, Mr. Celebrity, and they're too big to talk, so yeah. it, it's nice. Like, what makes this a place that you've stayed at for so long? Well, I like who I work for. I like Wayne. Mm -hmm. um, I loved Ralph and Risty. And I think most of my, um, my fellow employees, you know, were, were friends um, outside of the restaurant as mm -hmm. well. Interesting. Um, a, lot of, a lot of families work together here. We have some, some people who started working and then they brought their wife in or they brought their son in. So it's a big family. The employees are really the heart. I mean, it's very important that we have trained people. We don't we don't want a lot of turnover because it just adds a lot of training time and downtime and non-productive time. So it's better, in my opinion, to keep good employees, uh, keep them happy within reason. Obviously, you have to work. I mean, sure. there's no free lunch out there. Right. And they are aware of that. So it's not like. Uh, we don't want to mistreat people. We want to treat them like we want to be treated. And right. So that's that's an important part of what we do. And I started out as, you know, I my first job was flipping burgers in a McDonald's. So I mean, 
I learned a lot there. So, Absolutely. I mean, it was a basic training class. So, mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've done all kinds of jobs in this business and bartending, and uh, I can run the dishwasher if I need to. But again, I, I try to put myself in their spot and then try to work from that. I mean, there's certain things that we do require, mm -hmm. and uh, most, most of them want to know what to do correctly. And if we teach them that, then they do it. It's, it's, you know, it's all communication. I think the fact that you have done all of the jobs as well makes it easier on everyone else because you understand. I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and it's work, it's hard work. And Absolutely. You have to focus and you gotta pay attention and that's important. Yep. You, know. you must be doing something right, Wayne. I hope so. <laughs> And that will do it for today's show. The Admiral Risty will turn 52 in October, so come on down and visit Wayne and the gang. I'm Maria Soreo, and we'll see you next time around the peninsula.